The Ares Empire is depicted as a tranquil place where seagulls glide gracefully through the clear blue sky. The cityscape below is bathed in sunlight, highlighting the peaceful atmosphere of the empire. As we move through the city, we see a grand statue symbolizing the proud heritage of the Ares Empire. The streets are bustling with life, and children can be seen playing safely. Two soldiers stand guard, chatting casually. One of them remarks, Isn't it so peaceful? The other responds with a hint of concern, Peaceful? Who knows when the revolutionaries might act up again? They both laugh, easing the tension of the moment with one saying, Ha ha ha, I know, right? Then he remarks, It's been quiet recently, hasn't it? Suggesting that the Emperor's knights might have quelled the rebellion. Another soldier replies, Maybe they realized their efforts were pointless. Meanwhile, a group of revolutionaries plots in a dimly lit room. One of them declares, Tonight, we will kill the Emperor and bring down the Empire, emphasizing the importance of their mission. Logan McLean, one of the key figures in the plot, is told, Your role is the most important, Logan. You must sacrifice everything to protect the secret text at all cost. Logan acknowledges this with a determined look, saying, I'm aware. Later, Logan is seen with his comrades, discussing their plans and motivations. One comrade says, You guys are patriots. Logan replies, What do you mean? The comrade explains, I mean, the secret text. Countless people were sacrificed to take and protect the secret text from the Empire, and possessing that book makes you the number one target of the Empire military. Then he remarks, you're taking that risk to protect the book. Logan, feeling frustrated, replies, you make it sound like I volunteered for this role. The comrade explains, of course, it's because you're fluent in the ancient tongue, but protecting it without complaints is patriotic enough. Feeling insulted, Logan shouts, that's enough, you're indirectly insulting the other comrades. Logan, however, reveals his true motivation, saying, I'm not doing this for protection, but for revenge. Logan reflects on his past, thinking, I was a good for nothing. He recalls an incident where he and his brother Ronan were training. Despite Logan's 10 years of intense training, Ronan surpasses him. Onlookers watch in disbelief as Logan lies defeated on the ground. Unbelievable. Young master Ronan has surpassed his older brother Logan, someone exclaims. Another person remarks, It has only been three years since young master Ronan took up the sword, right? Meanwhile, Logan has been training for ten years. He's a genius, referring to Ronan's exceptional skills. However, Logan's intense drive and jealousy led him down a dark path. In a flashback, it is revealed that Logan poisoned his brother with paralysis poison. Logan's father, furious, shouts, You poisoned your brother? Are you out of your mind, Logan? If Ronan cannot recover from this... Driven by his actions, Logan's father shouts, Get out! You are no longer my son. Logan is exiled from the family estate, reflecting, I was driven away from the house of McLean by my father who hated me. For that sin, I was kicked out of the family. That was who I am. I left the family and became a mercenary. Logan continues to remember his journey. Only after ten years of hard work did, I realize how terrible of a person I had been. But by then, it was all too late. As Logan walks down the street, he overhears two onlookers whispering to each other. One of them says, Did you hear? Logan continues walking, blending into the crowd. The announcer proclaims, Everyone, the prisoner for today's execution is the last descendant of the royal family. The crowd murmurs in anticipation. One person asks, The prisoner's name is... Another person, cloaked and hidden in the crowd, whispers, Ronan McLean. News spreads quickly among the onlookers. The royal family was executed, weren't they? Asks one person. Another responds, He was abandoned. Realising the gravity of the situation, Logan fears for his brother Ronan. He starts running towards the execution site, thinking... Ronan, no, there is something I must tell you, so please be alive. As Logan reaches the execution site, it is too late. His younger brother has already been executed. 
The crowd is loud and cheering. One of the soldiers yells, Everyone, look! The end of a fool who dared to stand against the Empire, Logan stands in shock and grief, watching the scene unfold. He reflects with a mix of sorrow and anger. I promised that I would get revenge. Revenge on the Empire for killing my family. And taking away my chance to beg for forgiveness. After that, Logan steals the secret text from the castle, and as he attempts to escape with the secret book, chaos ensues. Guards shout, After him! It's him! That redhead has the secret book! Logan dashes through the castle, pursued relentlessly by the guards. He navigates through the corridors, trying to evade capture. One guard yell, Over there! While another lunges at Logan, shouting, Die, rebel! Logan engages in fierce combat, skillfully fending off the attackers. Shit, he mutters as he fights off yet another guard. One more! He exclaims in frustration as he dispatches an enemy. Despite his best efforts, Logan is eventually cornered. Surrender and give us the secret text, the guards yells demand. Realizing he has no choice, Logan resolves to make a final stand. You leave me with no choice, he declares. He clenches his fist, summoning all his strength and yells, let's all die. His body glows with a fiery aura, shocking the guards. What? One guard exclaims, bewildered. Logan's determination reaches its peak as he releases a powerful explosion, annihilating the surroundings. The blast is devastating, destroying the castle and causing chaos. In the aftermath, Logan's mind reflects on his life and regrets. What is my last commitment, he wonders. He acknowledges his failure to protect his family and wishes he had begged for forgiveness. As he falls through the debris, Logan hopes for redemption in the afterlife. If I can meet my family in the afterlife, I will beg them for their forgiveness, he thinks. In his final moments, he gasps one last time, symbolizing the end of his journey. Just then, Logan, with a gasp, regains consciousness and shouts in frustration, a nightmare. His sudden outburst startles the main servant, Rick, who says, Young master, are you all right? Logan, still disoriented, replies, Rick, you're... Rick? Rick confirms, Yes, your main servant, Rick. How do you feel, young master? Confused, Logan mutters, Rick died 30 years ago. How are you alive? Logan grapples with his thoughts, questioning the reality of the situation. Rick, noticing Logan's confusion, suggests, I think the young master has hurt his head badly. He urgently calls out, Bring the doctor. As Logan is led away, he observes the familiar surroundings and wonders. Is this a dream? His eyes widen as he spots his younger brother, Ronan, approaching him. Brother, Ronan says softly. Logan is taken aback, recognizing the scene from his past. He recalls, This voice, Ronan, this scene, I remember it. When we had our first duel. Ronan, concerned, asks, Are you all right? Logan, overwhelmed with memories and emotions, internally admits, I lost pitifully to my brother. And when he came to visit me, he harshly recollects, Fuck off! The painful memory floods back as he remembers shouting at his brother, You're nothing more than a child of a concubine. Ronan stands there, hurt but composed. Logan's internal monologue continues. After that day, he no longer came to see me. Breaking the tense moment, Logan's main servant interjects, Logan, this young master needs to rest. Ronan, seeing Logan's distress, suggests, Please go back. It's okay. Logan hesitates but relents. Ronan, you can come closer. But Rick was amazed. At Logan's good behavior, Ronan approached cautiously and said, Brother, I'm sorry, I should have been careful. Logan replies with a smile, It's okay. You don't need to apologize. You didn't do anything wrong. Internally, he thinks, I should be the one to apologize. And he starts crying. Ronan, seeing him, questions, Are you okay, Logan? You need to rest. Logan, with a renewed sense of purpose, thinks to himself, Someone as kind as he was killed, and was killed by the kingdom. Logan apologizes to Ronan, he continues to express his remorse. 
I'm so sorry. Ronan, confused, asks, Logan, why are you crying? Logan hugs Ronan tightly, tears streaming down his face. Rick watches them from a distance, amazed at Logan's behavior. As Ronan leaves, he promises, I'll come to visit you again. Logan replies, yeah, go rest. Logan then reflects on preventing the disastrous future he knows is coming. Just then, Mary enters Logan's room, confused. She suddenly apologizes to him. Logan, still deep in thought, turns to her and asks the reason. Rick comes in and says, Oh no, it looks like Mary interrupted your rest. I forgot to warn her. I'm sorry, young master. They keep apologizing, reminding Logan of how badly he used to mistreat the servants. Logan says, I'm fine. She didn't do anything. But Rick, bring me a pen and paper. Rick and Mary's expressions turn to fear. Rick asks, What are you going to do to Mary with a pen and paper, young master? Logan replies, Idiot. Just send her out and bring me a pen and paper. Rick returns with the pen and paper, placing them on the table. Logan thanks him and asks him to leave, making sure no one comes into his room. Rick, surprised, asks, Did you just thank me, young master? Rick, worried, asks if Logan is all right and if his head hurts. Logan, frustrated, yells, I said I'm fine. Get out. Rick, relieved by Logan's reaction, assumes he must be fine and leaves, reminding Logan to rest. Left alone, Logan thinks to himself, Let's be patient. These are all the consequences of my actions. Logan realizes that the most important thing right now is to record everything that will happen. As he starts writing, he recalls the big war against the Empire that will occur in ten years, a disaster that will bring down not only his family, but the entire nation. His goal is to prevent this disaster. However, before that, Logan remembers the war of fiefdom that will occur a year from now. It began abruptly and partially destroyed their family, bringing them into dark times. Logan knows he needs to prevent this war first. Meanwhile, a soldier approaches Logan's father's room, calling him Patriarch from the outside. As his father turns, the servant reports, The first young master is here to see you. Upon hearing this, Logan's father's expression changes to one of surprise and concern as he exclaims, Logan is... Enjoying the journey so far? Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button to keep the adventure going.